Hey guys, well I've got my um, next Jack the Ripper video sort of lined up but uh, I wanted to do a little sort of infill video about the Victorian slums um, we know all about the slums, I've done a, a couple of videos about the um, population and the slums um, i just read you a little bit from this History Extra so George Godwin, the editor of The Builder, described a Holborn co court, so Holborn's a, a, a district, around 1859. He could, as well he knew, have been describing any one of an uncountable number of courts and alleys clustered densely in the old suburbs around the cities of London and Westminster and in the ancient borough of Southwark. Many of these places predated the Great Fire of 1666 or have been cheaply run up since then, with passages cut through houses fronting the streets and leading to courts built on gardens and yards behind. So I'm finding more references. Um, it's strange because not that long ago I couldn't find any references to just to how old these houses were, but here they're saying that many of the houses that were ended up being slums predated the Great Fire of 1666, so um, I'm I'm actually sort of like um, thinking that a lot of these houses predated the Great Fire of 1666, and some got done up and some didn't. So um, there's another little bit here that I wanted to read. Um, how everybody came racing into London in the mid. 19th century just everybody just it all came racing in from the country and filled London up and I, I just find it difficult to believe I just where these people came from I don't know but it didn't just happen in London it happened everywhere huge movements of populations into areas it's too long ago now for us to know I mean they could have come in they could have been emigres they could have been from Russia the Ukraine Italian huge baby mix of people they could have come from anywhere but they tell us they came from the countryside always so what happened in the countryside did they just stop producing stuff was the countryside overcrowded no it wasn't it wasn't so um london was just a building site as far as i'm concerned for about 40 or 50 years while they were building all this stuff and doing all this stuff up, all the churches, all the big buildings, all the houses, and yet they never mention the builders, they never mention um, the construction workers, the everyday labourers, and there's no photographs of any construction. If you put in building construction photos, Victorian London, you'll get that. That's um, a common one that you'll get. It's, uh, I think it's St Pancras or King's Cross, this sort of thing. Yeah, building the underground, everything else looks like it's already in situ, man. And the, also these underground, these uh, London underground photographs that they show, they, they show the London undergrounds. This is what they call the cut and cover, where they just go under the ground, under here. And a lot of this, to me, looks as if it's, you know, I mean, what is going on here? Are they digging it out or filling it in? You know, it's 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 just all wishy-washy and strange to me, the whole thing. Hang on, let's carry on. I mean that, what's that? And also the size of everything. Everything's so big. Look, the windows, the doors. I mean, we've, 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 this isn't new me noticing that everything's huge because everything is huge isn't it look this is the sort of thing you get in Earl's Court look at the side look at these people I think that whoever was here before us was slightly bigger than us we're new look at this there's never any construction photos and although there's lots and lots of information about the London navvies yeah all the navvies that came over from um, Ireland and uh, English working class men digging the canals and the railways, there's nothing 
about the builders of London. Nothing. It's as if they didn't exist. So, this is a site that I found. It's called the Circumlocution, Circumlocution Office. And this, this is really, really interesting. So, during the Industrial Revolution, London grew at an unprecedented rate as people flocked to the city to seek work in the new factories. A lack of accommodation... See, London wasn't as industrial. It had small industry, but it wasn't hugely industrial. A lack of accommodation led to people being... Oh, bad spelling. Cramed. Crammed into buildings, usually located in slum areas, some dating back to the medieval period that are grown up near to areas around churches. These slums lacking amenities such as piped water and sewage disposal, and the populations relied on wells and pumps that became increasingly polluted by nearby cesspits and other pollution from the streets. Yeah. So here's a map. Now, these are uh, five notorious areas, and I'm going to show you these three. Oh, oh, come back. This is where I live today, down here. This is Whitechapel, where all the um, Jack Ripper stuff went on. This is Westminster, that's where the Houses of Parliament are. This is Notting Hill, where the carnival is. This is all like all the posh bit. This is the top Clerkenwell, that's all like north. That's a bit rough up there. <laughs> right, Saffron Hill. A notorious part of Holborn that grew up next to the blank banks of the River Fleet. Now, the River Fleet is one of London's lost rivers. takes its name from the saffron which was once grown here on land owned by the bishops of Ely. The land laid on an embankment of the western edge of the river fleet. So Charles Dickens locates Fagin's den near Field Lane, the southern extension of Saffron Hill. A dirtier or more wretched place he had never seen. I mean they're just and yet, and yet, at the same time, running pretty much next to it, there was all this wealth and all this money and all these pampered and perfumed posh people parading around in Hyde Park and going to fireworks displays and the theatre and just generally poncing about while all this was going on. And I look at history and look at the thousands of years of civilization. I wonder what the hell was going on that it took England up until um, the 19th century to get their act together. And of course they didn't. Their act has been together on and off many times over the bloody years. It's ridiculous. It's obvious that this place was completely messed up and it took them quite a while to sort it out. It was... I don't know. I think I think um, the date the the date for the big event, or I, I'm guessing, was around um, the time of uh, John D. Q. Queen Elizabeth I, and I think there were many other events in between. I mean, London's weather, uh, w w the, 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 the England's weather, was absolutely diabolical. I mean, the Thames used to freeze for three months every year, and these weather conditions we're having now that everybody is saying is as a result of climate change weren't the norm. So, okay. So, Saffron Hill. I want to crack on because there's two of them that I want to show you. And I've immediately just closed down the entire page, haven't I? It won't take me long. History. Saffron Hill. Yeah, back to the Circumlocution Locution Office. Saffron Hill. And then we have Seven Dials. Built as a fashionable area 
By the early 19th century, Seven Dials had become infamous, together with St Giles to the north, as the most notorious rookery or thieves' den in London. So these people moved in and just took over, didn't they? They just took over some of these houses that needed doing up, I think, and didn't move. So they did everything else up around them. And then it got to the point where these places were so run down that they actually had to do something about it. This one was called Nottingdale, also known as the Potteries. Got a nice little map. And these are the two I want to look at. Westminster. Devil's Acre. Now this place here, let's see if I've got the map. This was right close to Westminster Abbey. The streets that encompassed the Devil's Acre were Old Pie Street, Great St Anne's Lane and Duck Lane. It appears to have been a notorious rookery for over a hundred years. So he wrote about it in... Um, Charles Dickens wrote about it. There are multitudes who believe that Westminster is a city of palaces, of magnificent squares and regal terraces. That is the chosen seat of opulence, grandeur and refinement, and that filth, squalor and misery are the denizens of other and less favoured sections of the metropolis. So yeah, there it wasn't good. It wasn't a good. And it was here in Westminster, and there's a Great Peter Street runs down through here. So you can see how close it was to the river and Buckingham Palace. I'll show you on here. This is the wiki one. And this was a, an illustration by the French artist Gustave Doré who came over. It's quite interesting. So you can see here there's a large building here. And you can also see how this is actually on a hill. Can you actually see how this rises up? Because this is all lower. This is just mudded. This is this is probably what the rest of the houses look like. I think what they did was they built on the tops of what they found. You know, they 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 they're deep, they've dug all this. This is all dug. They probably had to climb up to this probably had to climb up to it because everything else is below it so this was still mudded this was a still a mudded area hang on sorry so the reason this place got all mashed up like this was because it used to have it used to be sort of like a sanctuary there was like an area here that was a sanctuary like a safe haven to suspected criminals and debtors. So when all these masses of people all moved in, they all moved into here, into here and these other places. Dwellings were built with the cheapest material, lacked ventilation, had poor lighting and no drainage or sanitation facilities. They, they were just mudded houses that didn't get done up and because they were living in them, they couldn't do them up. And I strongly suspect that a lot of these slum places were where the builders lived were the people who were digging out well. I say builders loosely because I think a lot of them were just digging these things out. This is my estate. Yeah? This is some of the houses on my estate. These things here, Shaftesbury Estate. 1,400 houses they say were built. Hang on, Battersea. in the space of two and a half, three years, in England, in the sorts of weather conditions we have here, yeah. I found quite a nice little example a minute ago of what I wanted to show you with these houses. This is it. So these just do not look Victorian to me. There's, there's certain elements about them. This, these have been filled in. They look ecclesiastical to me. I think these were probably um, atta attached to an abbey or something, to a church. 
I mean, this is on the Shaftesbury estate as well. This is on my estate. And this was built the same time as all the other houses. And it's a mud, proper mud flood. You can see here it's under. And I've always strongly suspected that these, most of these places were just windowless, roofless, mudded, and had um, pigs and cows running around in there. So back to our slums. And this is my favourite one. I've been saving this till last. Jacob's Island. Now this is this is absolutely fascinating and I've got an absolutely wonderful site to show you. It was a notorious rookery or thieves den in Bermondsey. It was located in Bermondsey on the south bank of the River Thames. Well, I'm going to forget about this one and show you this one. And I bet I haven't got it. Oh, here it is. And my bookmarks. I know where it is, so. There we go. Kid Safe has blocked this site. Right, hang on. Hey guys. Well, sorry about that. That was completely crazy. I had to get in touch with my internet provider. I couldn't get onto my into my account. It was glitching so much I couldn't even open the page. Anyway, I persevered, and here we are. So Jacob's Island. This is a wonderful painting of it. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Look at this place. It looks like Skyrim. So London has always awed visitors with its size and grand architecture, but like other cities, it was more interesting in the past than in the present. So, seriously crowded, poorer areas. Jacob's Island was particularly squalid, a run-down area surrounded and crossed by stagnant, sewage-filled ditches. Now, these sewage-filled ditches weren't always um, sewage-filled. If you go and look at old maps of Jacob's Island, this is in 1658. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring that up. You can see these are all very, very finely cut out um, water canals all around here and up through here. They incorporated a river and um, also, you can see here. 1682 you can just see this how beautifully made this is and then gradually by 1827 it was like that yeah I'll go back to read some more about Jacob's Island I just want to show you what else was here Bermondsey Abbey so in 1658 we had an abbey here gardens these wonderful sort of waterways and a diverted river okay so let's go back so Bill Sykes in Oliver Twist dies in Jacob's Island. It was like really, really infamous and extremely picturesque because it had all these like wooden galleries that people were building onto the houses and they were all overhanging everything. It was very, very quaint. And at the first house on the left, now destroyed, Bill Sykes met his death. So these are some of the houses in um, Jacob's Island, which look a lot like these houses here, don't they? And it doesn't take a huge stretch of imagination to see my houses looking sort of like that. This sort of thing. Bits stuck on the front. Near to that part of the Thames on which the church at Rotherhide abuts, with the buildings on the banks are dirtiest and the vessels in the river blackest with the dust of colliers and the smoke of close-built low-roofed houses. 
So goes on about crazy wooden galleries coming to the backs of half a dozen houses with holes from which to look upon the slime beneath. So this was echoed in the rookeries of London. So as an island, yeah, they called it Jacob's Island. It was a man-made island. Local maps place its date of creation between 1660 and 1680, the first 20 years of the reign of Charles II, when the tidal ditches surrounding and intersecting, intersecting the land were dug. The oldest houses and the crazy wooden galleries dated from this period. So, 1660 to 1680? Not 16, not 17, not 18. In the 19th century, these were 300 year old houses. Before 1658, this area contained a wide, T shaped mill pond, a large house and a short road with houses on both sides surrounded by vegetable plots, orchards and fields. Yeah, and quite often, hills, quite often it was, they were up as well, because there was stuff underneath. By 1830, Bermondsey was urbanised to the south of Jacobs Island. The 17th century ditches were still in situ, but redundant sections have been filled in over the years. Jacobs Island had become one of London's notorious rookeries and myriad secret doors and passages between cellars, attics, roofs and ditches provided these with escape routes and hiding places. Sounds great. The place teemed with children. The houses were mostly inhabited by corn runners, coal porters and longshoremen getting a precarious living. It's like wherever you lived, your work would have been in that area. So yeah, this lot would have been there. It was dubbed the Venice of Drains, the capital of cholera and the Jessore of England. Children died young. Good God. There was a public house called the Ship Aground, which is wonderfully appropriate. A visit to the cholera districts. 12,800 deaths. Where did they bury them all? Where did they bury all this 12,800 dead from the cholera? Did they just dig, put them in pits or something? Because these are the super poor. The water is covered with a scum almost like a cobweb and prismatic with grease. At the back of nearly every house that boasts a square foot or two of outlet are pigsties. In front waddled ducks while cocks and hens scratch at the cinder heaps. So my estate, they said that my estate was a pig, a pig, a piggery. All around here, piggeries. Pig, well, yeah, because they just let animals run in amongst all the and take shelter in um, what were essentially just shells of houses, I would have thought. Oh, God, I'd love, I'd love to find some evidence. I really, really would. I'd love to find some evidence of it because I just know, you know. So they're later Georgian houses. They look quite similar to them really, don't they? I'm not saying no building happened. Although, <laughs> I'm having a job finding any. I'm having a, having a job finding any evidence. Even of small building firms. I'd, I'd love to um, meet somebody whose family have been building in Battersea since the um, 1850s or something. Pick their brains. Right. This guy says something quite interesting here at the end. Let's have a look here first, because it says it was originally marshland. Soil excavated from the ditches was used to embank and raise the level of the adjacent ground to provide firm, dry foundations. The whole network of watercourses acted as an extended mill pond. It just seems to me like there was some community here that closed itself off with some sort of moat. And I'm guessing that a lot of these waterways that they built around here extended into the city. Yeah, it's a messed up place, a messed up place. This was 1658, 
looking quite together here. So at the end this guy says, For all its unhealthiness, Jacob's Island was a human place and unique. Every building was sui generis. The brutal, dreary, industrial and housing estates that have replaced such localities are more depressing to the human spirit than that they replaced. A time traveller to Jacob's Island would, in utter fascination, rush to explore and record its every nook and cranny. If the dice of history had fallen differently, might Jacob's Island have survived to the present day? Venice and Bruges were once decayed and pestilential but were saved and restored. 17th century streets, whilst rare, still survive in York, Chester and elsewhere. 17th century streets. These are houses that survived the fire, fire of London. And just events. They were just hanging around there when people moved in. And um, once they were in there, they couldn't uh, shift them. Very wonderful, very ancient houses. In 1861, when a fire destroyed London Street and neighbouring and neighbouring streets, all, all the wonderful, very ancient houses. Hmm. The floors of the houses being below the level of the footpath must be flooded in wet weather. The rooms are mould. This sounds like a mud flooded house, doesn't it? The rooms are mouldy and ill savoured dark, small and confined. Yeah. So, I just wanted to sort of like just tie in um, some of the research we've been doing about mud flood with um, London slums. Some of the, some of the slums, they're just, I mean, just a beautiful painting they did there. Jacob's Island, guys. Okay, well, thanks for watching. I got there in the end. 